Did you know that the Earth's shape is not actually round, but more like a potato? So how do we map the face of a potato using satellites traveling at 7,000 miles per hour and produce a crash scene map with sub-centimeter precision? If you want to know some of the science behind this process to enhance your courtroom testimony, that's what we're covering in this week's Trimble Forensics Tech Tip Tuesday. Here at Trimble, we have a rich pedigree in GNSS, dating back to 1984 with the first commercially available GPS positioning product on the market. We've led the way in this field to this day with the purpose-built Trimble Forensics Capture software, which has made the complex work of using satellites in space to forensically survey an outdoor crash or crime scene crazy simple. A couple taps on the screen, and you're up and running, documenting the location of evidence with clear view of the sky. Now, some users take these GNSS-derived measurements and use them in photogrammetry projects. But how much do we really know about how this magic actually works? Today, we're going into a little bit deeper dive on how that GNSS point list comes to be, so that your answer on the witness stand can be more than, I followed my cheat sheet. Let's start with the big one, the Earth itself. We like to think that the Earth is this perfectly round marble hurtling through space around a giant hot ball of gas. But in reality, the Earth is far from being a perfect sphere. It's more of an ellipsoid, bulged out in the middle, squished from top to bottom. Now, over time, this ellipsoid has been measured over and over. And the most widely used ellipsoid for the GPS system is called WGS84. This mathematical model of the Earth has a pole-to-pole squish of about 26.5 miles, or 42.7 kilometers. Now, what this means is that one degree of latitude in Key West, Florida, will be a different distance across the ground than one degree of latitude, say, in Anchorage, Alaska. GPS coordinates can be expressed in two ways. The first way is what we are most used to, degrees latitude and degrees longitude. Now, what we don't usually see is the third required value, which is the orthogonal height above the ellipsoid surface. Reporting of latitude, longitude, and height is the spherical method of reporting a position on the Earth. Now, this is much like an optical total station, which measures a horizontal angle, vertical angle, and distance. Now, the second method is with the simple X, Y, and Z. X represents the distance along one axis, Y represents the distance along the other, and Z along the third, with the center of the Earth being 0, 0, 0. Now, we don't see the second method very often, but either one will report the same position on the planet. So let's throw another variable into the mix. The Earth's gravity is not uniform, not even close. This modeling of the Earth's gravitational variance around the planet is called a geoid. Now, while the ellipsoid is the mathematical surface of the planet, the geoid is the gravitational surface of the planet. The geoid can also be explained as localized mean sea level. If the entire planet were covered in still water, the geoid is the shape that the surface of the water would take on. That is, without tidal forces pulling the water around, which is not factored into the geoid's model. The difference between the ellipsoid, or the mathematical model, and the geoid, or the actual gravitational model, is called the geoid height. This is not to be confused with elevation, which is a different thing altogether. So we've covered the ellipsoid surface, and we've covered the geoid surface. Now, let's talk about the surface we all live, work, and play on, the ground surface. The ground surface is independent of the other two, and is the thing we usually want to survey or map. To map the ground surface, we need to flatten it out onto a grid, sometimes called a ground-to-grid transformation. The points mapped near the intersection of the ellipsoid and the grid are scaled at a factor of 1. Points mapped on the center or the edges need a scale factor applied to them to fit onto the grid proportionally. But this is assuming the ground is at the exact same elevation as the ellipsoid, which is very rarely the case. The further the ground is from the ellipsoid or height above the ellipsoid, the more distortion is at play. Now, if your plane or grid is far below your ground, Precision work becomes very difficult. Now that brings us to a commonly used grid coordinate system called UTM, or Universal Transverse Mercator. You can think of this as the squaring off of the Earth's surface into a series of 60 slices from equator to pole. 
These slices, called UTM zones, have a number assigned to them and are either north or south, depending on which side of the equator you're working. Fortunately for us, the Trimble Forensics Capture software is handling these complex calculations in the background. Now, needless to say, there's a lot going on behind the scenes, but here's a look behind the curtain. When you start a capture scene and record your first point, capture determines what UTM zone you're in. From there, the UTM projection scaling factor is applied. Now, in addition to projecting onto the correct UTM zone, a local site adjustment is created and a 000, 000 coordinate is assigned, much like the setup of an optical total station. Now, because of this, integration between GNSS and an optical total station on the same scene can be achieved. But that's not all. Terrestrial laser scanners can also be integrated at the scene, such as the Trimble X7, and on-site georeferencing of these laser scans can be done. Now, if you want to know more about how the georeferencing of laser scans works, we'll leave a link to the video for you to check it out. That wraps up this week's episode. Now, there's a lot more that goes into this, so if you're interested in learning more, contact your local Trimble Forensics dealer and ask them about certified Trimble Forensics training for your department. Genuine Trimble Certified Forensics Training is only available through our dealers or on learn.trimble.com, so be sure to give your local Trimble dealer a call. Thank you for watching. Stay safe.